Welcome to Miss V, the Storyteller Podcast. Of course, you already know what I'm going to say. I am excited. Well, I, I usually am very excited when I have guests on the show, especially when they're coming in, they're sharing stories. So today you may recognize her because Michelle Hall has been on the show before and her and I, I call her my number one fan because she has been following Miss V, the Storyteller Podcast since day one, two, three, four, five. And I just love her. She's so supportive. But I wanted her to come back on the show because she has some things going on. And I really wanted her to come and share her story. Um, you know, I told you I was going to have women to come on the show that's empowering and uplifting. Well, she's one of them. So before she shares her story with us, Michelle is going to tell us a little bit about herself. So Michelle, if you would, please tell us a little bit about Miss Michelle Hall. Thank you, Miss V. And I appreciate you having me on the show again. I think this is what, my third time now? So uh, yes, I am Michelle Hall. I am a, a certified Christian life coach. And right now my focus is on fi finances, helping women with their finances. Um, I am a mom of one uh, young man that I am super proud of. And um, I made some transitions here last year, which is uh, what I'm going to talk about a little later on. So I'm not going to get into that now, but uh, I'm just, I'm happy to be here and to share and uh, hopefully inspire and empower some women. That's exactly what I want. I want us to empower, uplift each other, each other through our stories by sharing our stories. You know me and how I feel the importance of sharing stories with each other. And real quick today, I was listening to, I love Noah, Trevor Noah. If you've heard of him, he used to be on the um, Daily Show. And he has a podcast and I was listening to his podcast and he was talking about stories. And of course, you know, he's uh, part African and, you know, that's his heritage. And he talked about how, you know, his grandmother and his his mom and all this, how they always share stories. And it made me feel so good because I feel the same way he was talking about the way his grandmother feels. It's like, Noah, you would never learn anything if you don't share your stories. If you don't talk about these things, then you won't know. So I encourage you, please, you guys, share stories, talk about those things that may be a little bit uncomfortable. But if you come, if you've already come out of it, that is the perfect time to share because you can share your experience in hope that it would uplift someone else. So with all of that said, Michelle is going to share a story with us. So sit back and listen and glean. So Michelle, please go ahead and share your story. Okay. So uh, as I said, I was on the show earlier. Um, and when I was on the show, I was talking about uh, my target audience at that time. I was coaching uh, women who had experienced uh, childhood sexual abuse. And uh, that's how I started out as a coach. I became a certified Christian life coach in December of 2020. And that's when I started my, my company, The Esteemed Life. And that was my focus. I, I wanted to help that, that population of women because it was an experience of my own. And I know the, the devastation that it can bring and the disruption, uh, the low self-esteem, low self-image that it can put upon a woman and, and stick, uh, stick with you throughout life if you don't get help with it. And so that was what I had uh, talked about in, in earlier episodes of the uh, Miss V storyteller when I appeared. But here recently, uh, I made some major transitions in, in my life. Uh, when I started as, out as a life coach, I was working full time. And, um, you know, sometimes when you're working full time and you don't really have a big concern about money coming in, you don't always work your side business like you should. And that's something that I, you know, that I can say is true for myself, but um, the time came for me to leave my, my full-time job. I, it, it was a choice that I made or it was, well, it was more of a choice that, that God made for me. But um, earlier in 2023, 
I began to map that out. I, I, I made a plan and I saved so that I could, you know, go through the transition. And I actually left full-time employment in September of 2023 to focus on coaching full-time. And at the same time, my son was going into the military. And um, so, you know, it, it was a lot going on in, in my life at that time. You know, he has, of course, he had been with me, of course, all of his life. And um, with him leaving and with me no longer having a full-time job, it was a bit of an adjustment. Yeah. And um, I am so happy for him. I am, I'm proud of him. I, I miss him dearly because he is my only one but um that all that happened in the same month so you know it, yeah. it was just a huge tra transition for for me and then going into coaching full-time and working you know working my coaching business like a business mm -hmm. uh there's a lot of learning there you know yeah. there, there's a lot that it takes to make a business successful and also as I was moving through that process uh, I became aware that the target audience that I was working with uh, was not the audience that I should be focusing on. I will always have a love and and support for that population of women. And I do believe that I will work with them in the future. Mm -hmm. But it became clear to me that my focus was to be helping women with their finances. Uh, and so I, I made a transition to uh, focus on women, ma mature women who are approaching retirement to help them get their finances in order um, to get their retirement accounts straight and to prepare for that transition in, in life. And so now I am a finance coach. And I'm so excited about that. I'm going to be, uh, I don't know for when this airs, but I'm doing my first challenge where uh, it's a five-day challenge where I'm going to be working with women, uh, giving them tips on how to uh, boost their retirement savings. And um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. It has just been a progress, you know, a pro progression per se of, um, getting more clarity on what my, my purpose is. And it's interesting because it was prophesied to me on several occasions that that's what I would be doing, that I would be helping women to heal their finances. Now I've, I've always had an interest in personal finance. My professional background is in accounting and I worked in that field up until I left. I was uh, a budget director when I left full-time employment and I was managing budgets over a hundred million dollars. So um, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable with numbers and I ju I've just always had that interest in personal finance. I think uh, it stemmed from my childhood because I grew up in a single parent household where there was not very much money. And I, I became aware as I got older that everybody didn't live like this. And, um, and so I, and so I, I wanted to make a change for my, myself as I moved in, you know, as I became a, an adult and it's just always been an interest of mine, you know, managing my, my money well and wanting other people to manage their, their money. Well, I hate to see people struggling with money, especially people who work and make good money and struggle with money. So that's just a part of the tra transition that I've made. And so I'm looking forward to my first cohort of uh, women and my new coaching program, uh, helping them with their retirement readiness. Wow. That was, a, that was huge, especially in the same month, your son going away and then you're retiring and not knowing what that looks like. I mean, you know what it looks like to other people that you talk to, but actually for yourself, what it looks like. Well, I have a small story. Um, when I, when I was growing up money for us, when we were, when my parents were, was together was always plentiful for the most case. We thought that we were, we had our own house, we had our own backyard, you know, we had 
cars in the driveway. The house that we lived in belonged to my great grandfather. So there was always plentiful. And um, my grandparents, they had, they grew crops. So we had fresh vegetables and all this stuff. But then when my parents um, separated, it was a culture shock for us. Mm -hmm. Now we're going from plentiful to what is this? Because that's exactly what we were like. What is this? First of all, what is an apartment? Why are we here in this apartment? Because yeah. that's all my mom could afford. And my dad was being a little bit shady. You know, he was in his feelings because he really didn't want my mom to leave. And so he was acting out, you know, so mom had to do what she could. And that's when I started to experience lack. We didn't have those things that we had. I mean, we were in gymnastics, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. I mean, my parents had put us in all kinds of things. And I told my mom when I became an adult, I said, I don't think you liked us because y'all was putting us in everything so, so that y'all would have to have the children at the home. And my mama would just laugh, but we had so much exposure. She would just put us in all kinds of things. We were in um church um sing-offs when they had things singing in the choir and all that. I mean, my mom put us in everything. Well, that stopped because the money flow had stopped. So this is where I first started to see the struggle with money, watching my mom. And I remember one, I think I was probably in the sixth grade and we were living in an apartment. Let me just tell y'all something. I don't like apartments and I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> like apartments they don't have like a they don't have a backyard they don't have a yard y'all you got neighbors that live on top and on the side of you depending on where you're but i'm not gonna keep talking about apartment if you live in an apartment <laughs> god bless you but i'm just talking about for me because the experience was not always the best living in an apartment but i remember my mom she never ate at home and i came home and i'm like do y'all know this mama never eats she didn't, she would eat at work to make sure that her children had food so that we would eat. So she would always eat at work and, uh, and she would have things at work and she would have snacks and stuff that she would bring. So she would never eat at home because she didn't have the money to make, you know, she wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that we all ate. So finally, when my parents went to court and the lawyer and the judge decided okay sir you need to pay this chick some money because she is struggling and so my dad started the the support and all that so things got a little bit better but I can always remember my mom stressing about money trying to figure it out and that is something that I never wanted to do watching her right. so you know we learn from different things just like you were talking about but I want to take you back a little bit for, let's rewind a little bit. Tell me about the day you sat there and you said, you know what? I'm going to retire. What did it feel like? I mean, what was your thought? Because I know that there's people out there that's probably thinking about it or it's crossing their mind. What, I mean, how did you feel? Were you afraid? Was Did fear set in? I mean, what happened on the day or was it a period of time? And then one day you just say, okay, I'm going to fill out the paperwork. Well, <laughs> I I think the time had been coming because I was increasingly becoming more uh, annoyed at work. Okay. And mm -hmm. I, I genuinely enjoyed what I did. I had been on that job in that role for 10 years and I was excited about it. I loved it. I enjoyed, you know, working with the budgets. I, I knew, you know, pretty much everybody that I needed to know on campus because it was at a local college and um, I had just formed a lot of friendships. I knew a lot of people and I, I thoroughly enjoyed the work, but it just began to not be enjoyable. And I, I knew that I would not stay. And here, here's a point too, that I, I didn't say uh, earlier, but I said, I left the job. I did not retire from, from work. 
Oh, I, I, I quit work. <laughs> oh, I thought you retired. Well, oh my God. Well, I, cause I, you're not old enough. Well, I guess you I can retire. I will be any able age. to retire when I meet the age re requirement. Okay. Okay. But I was not there. And, you know, a lot of people were like, you're, you're, you're just going to leave. I'm like, yes. I said, I have a call from, from the Lord. I mm -hmm. said, it's, it's time for me to go. And I knew it was time for me to go because I so didn't want to go to work in the morning. And when you get to that, that point, then you, you know, it's, it's time, it's time to do something different. And it was just that nudge. Mm -hmm. you oh, know, it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to, you know, leave this behind and trust me for what I have ahead. And so it was not scary. Okay. It was not scary. I think because I knew it was coming. I just okay. didn't know when. And I just really just had to sit down and make, make the choice to make it happen and map out my uh, plan. So I, I really began to plan about six or seven months prior to leaving. Okay. Because I knew I had to save you know, save up enough money to sustain me until I could start, you know, really making money to replace, you know, some or all of my income from my job. And so that's, that's what I did over the six, you know, the next six, seven months is that I just saved, you know, I saved a lot of money up and I was able to leave in uh, mid September. And so People don't always understand your journey. They don't always understand the choices and the de decisions that you make, but it's not for other people to understand. Cause so you know, like I said, I had people asking me, Oh, are you retiring? Or, you know, well, what, what, what are you going to do? You know, they, they were like, <laughs> you know, some of them were just like dumbfounded, like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I got stuff to do, you know? And so I, I, I just knew, I just knew that it was time for me to go. And, uh, at the time I decided that I was going to go, I didn't know that my son was going into the military. Uh, okay. he, had been, he had been, you know, contemplating some, some things, trying to work some things out for, for himself. And, uh, so I had no idea that it was going to all cul culminate at the same time. And so, um, yeah, I, I felt good about it. You know, I didn't feel bad once I let management know, cause I, I began planning long before I let them know, but, um, I let them know probably about two months prior to okay. my going out. And, um, I was able, which was very good. Cause I was able to help them hire the lady that took my role. Okay because I, I was still there. So okay. it, it's all good. You know, I felt good. I, I knew it was time. I had no ap apprehension whatsoever because I knew it was the right thing for me to do. Okay. I like that. And I, I just thought you retired, but then I always in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't think she's old enough to retire, but then I don't really know. I mean, I know people that retire at 40, but you know, it just depends on if you're retiring and you have a multi-million dollar business or you retire because it's your age and you just sick of the people and you are ready <laughs> to just cut them loose. So, but um, this is a question that I always ask. I love asking this question because it really says, you know, a lot about your story. And when you share your story, how sometimes, because when we share our story, we got to look back and we got to pull up things from, you know, what was the biggest lesson you learned from the transition, from leaving a steady paycheck, as they would say, you know, um, to going into unknown territory? Is there a lesson that you learned or was it, is it something that you had to face? What was that? Well, like I said, it was a transition because I was going to be working from home full time. Um, and for a lot of people, that seems like it's the ideal thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I enjoy working from home. I I consider myself an introvert. Um, and so it doesn't bother me to be at home. Um, I can really be at home. <laughs> 
some weeks. I only go out a couple times a week. Uh, I, I'm just not trying to be out in traffic and, you know, and, but I came, I came to realize that I missed the socialization of being okay. at, at work. Yeah. Um, and so I, so I do miss that because like I said, I had formed a lot of, of, of friendships there and it's always good to see, see people that you enjoy working with and spending time with. And, um, you know, we don't go to work to make friends and to be social, but it's, it's, it's a plus when you enjoy the people that you work with. Yeah. And so I, I do miss that part of, you know, having people to, you know, laugh and joke with and, you know, share, share a cup of coffee, you know, ce celebrate a birthday. You know, my office was pretty much had a family style where we celebrated birthdays, okay. you know, we did showers, you know, if someone was pregnant or getting married or whatever, we enjoyed partying. We loved to eat and party for anything. And so <laughs> we got along well for, for, for the most part. And so that was uh, a big part that I, I learned because, you know, when you're working and you're going to, to work, you always say, Oh, you know, I'd rather be home. I'd rather be home. But then you get to be home and then you're like, dang, you know, I really miss seeing people. But that that was something that I thought was a bit sur surprising uh, because I, I, I don't mind being, you know, being home and not having a whole bunch of folks around most of the time. But it is good to, you know, to be able to get out a bit. So so I, I've had to manage that and, uh, you know, just kind of do things to get out of the house more than just staying in and working constantly. So what is a, um, I, I agree with you about if you're someone that works with a lot of people and then going completely blind, I think you would miss that because that's probably the part of the day that you enjoy the most. It's like, oh, I can't wait till I see, you know, Shonda, you know, that girl, she's so crazy. Or when you get in the mood, being able to go down the hall and just chit chat with somebody to lift you up because somebody down the other hall that made you mad. So, yes, yeah. <laughs> I agree well, with yeah. that. And that sounds very much like my office. Yes. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> When you were talking, I was thinking about the actual show, The Office, because they did stuff all the time. Um, it was a show that came out, I think it was like in two. I don't know, about 10 years ago. Anyway, it was called The Office and they used to celebrate all the time. But um, I want to um, ask you a question. If someone's out there and they are thinking about not necessarily retiring, but transitioning into something else and give us a piece of advice that you would give them for a, to prepare for it. Like you said, you prepared for it. Give them like one piece of advice or at least something to start with. Cause I don't want you to give all your stuff for free. Cause I want people to come and to, you know, get your coaching program. But if there's one piece of advice that you can give them, what would it be if they're in that situation where they're like sitting at their desk now, looking at this Miss V or listening to it. And it was like, I'm thinking the same thing. I can't stand coming in this place every day. These people get up by dirt. I don't even like to turn right. When it tell me to turn right in the pocket, like, I want to just keep going. <laughs> I think it's very important to map out a plan. Okay. Um, especially if you are a single person like myself and you, it's only your in, income, it, you know, it's a little different if you have a mate, a, a, a partner mm -hmm. that is you know, bringing in money into the household. But if you are a single person, well, I mean, you should do it if you have, have a mate as well, but it, especially if you're single, you should really map out a plan and a, a plan that, so that you are covered, you know, so that you're not getting kicked out of your house or your apartment right, or what, whatever, because De depending on what you're transitioning to do, it may take you a little time before you get constant money coming in. Okay. And so you need to have a plan. You need to have some savings, uh, some resources that can carry you through until you begin to bring in regular income from whatever you want to transition into. 
That's some good advice, you know, because sometimes we get in our feelings and our emotions and we make decisions, but we don't plan for, or we don't think about, okay, I am, um, I'm just sick of this. I'm not going to come put my two weeks in, but you've made no preparation for that. Right. And now you sit over there stressed out, bald headed because you can jump the gun. So right. I think that's really good advice to have a plan and stick with the plan. So what I like for you to do, because I don't want us to run out of time, but one question before, um, I want to know what are you looking most forward to in your business in 2025? Because now that you're getting in the rhythm for a year and you're finding out things and you're learning, in 2025, what are you looking most forward to? Well, I'm looking for increased revenue for one, mm -hmm. you know, as, I, as I'm growing, but I'm looking at... Uh, offering more services, more, you know, having more available to, to help people. Like right now, uh, my focus is on the pre-retirement pre program, but I also want to expand into helping small, small businesses uh, with their, with their finances. So I'm looking forward to expanding and that'll probably be more so through, through courses Oh, yeah, I like and that. So um, I'm looking forward to offering more and uh, just expanding. Okay, so if we're listening, someone is listening out there and they're saying, you know, I really want to talk to her. Oh, before we do that, let's talk a little, share a little bit about, because you have a Facebook group where you talk about finances. So give us some information on that, but also tell us about your coaching program and how we can get and connect with you if that's something that we need and we want to do. Okay. So I have a Facebook group called the Esteemed Retirement Collective, and it is for women who are uh, looking for retirement ad advice. And also for them to come in and share their experiences. Uh, I'm, I'm currently trying to grow the group now. It's a relatively new group. So I'm trying to grow that group now. So if you're interested in becoming a part of that, um, I'll give Ms. V the link to the group. Okay. And, uh, you can join the group. And I also have a coaching program called the Re Retirement Readiness Accelerator, which is a 12-week program. That focuses on three main things, which is uh, cash flow management, uh, in investment concepts and strategies, and uh, a retirement master plan. So that's what I'm. That's my focus right now, and I am starting my first cohort of of that because it'll be uh, a, a hybrid program where it'll be part group and part one on one. Because when you're dealing with people and their money. You know, you want to give them some privacy and some con confidentiality there. So there are uh, some concepts that will be group and then there will be parts of the program that will be one on one. Oh, I like that. So if we need to and we want to connect with you or we want to sign up for or get more information, tell us where your website, if you're on social media, if you would um, share that with us, just in case somebody's driving and like, I want to know, but I, I can't pull over. So if you would just share that with us so we know how to connect. Okay. Well, uh, you can go to my website, which is michellehall.co. And uh, if you want to find me on Instagram, I am at live, live the esteemed life. And on Facebook, I am... Michelle Hall, I think it's dot five is which one I am, but um, I'll give you the link to all, all of those. And, uh, or you could just reach out via email at Michelle, Michelle at live the esteemed life.com. Okay. I will make sure all that's in the, the show notes. And I know how you feel trying to remember all those things because you got yes, emails, you have all of that stuff. I, I, I'm trying I to remember. Yeah. Yes. I understand. <laughs> it's a lot. So, it is. I will make sure that all of that is in the um, show notes so you can look down. Um, and also you can just connect with her on Facebook, you guys, because she has a Facebook 
group and she's giving out information for free. You can just go and listen and glean and learn about your finances. And you don't have to be in retirement age because I'm not. But you can still learn and glean so you can know because there's things that you can start doing right now Absolutely. to prepare you wait, because you don't want to wait until you are in your 60s and you're like, oh, Lord, I need to start. No, 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 no. We need to start in our 40s and our 50s because yes. uh, we won't talk about the way the world is <laughs> it isn't going to be. So we need to get some things together. So, Michelle, thank you so much for being here, for sharing your story and just letting us know, you know, one of the things I like about your story is because there was, I didn't sense any fear, you know, it was unknown, but it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm so scared. So I thank you for that because oftentimes we will talk ourselves out of something out of fear instead of just walking in our purpose and fulfilling our purpose. So thank you so much for sharing and we're going to support you. Go down to those notes, you guys, and click on. But I also need you to push that thumbs up because thumbs up, that like button is going to help our stories get out even further in the world. So if you're watching on YouTube, push that thumbs up button and share with someone who may need this episode. So thank you again, Michelle, for being here. We love you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right.